Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here with Dr. Kai Goosens at the MIT McGovern Institute for Brain Research. And we want to talk about fear and stress and specifically how serious disorders in fear and stress may be treatable in the future using gene therapy and the brain. Welcome. Thank you. So gene therapy, the way I understand it, is actually fundamentally changing the DNA of some of the cells in your body so that they don't have a problem anymore. That's correct. So the basic premise behind gene therapy is that you are designing um, a virus that is basically a, an empty viral shell, and instead of having the DNA that would normally be present in that virus, you have replaced it with a piece of DNA that you have engineered that includes a gene, or perhaps more than one gene, uh, that you think will be beneficial to a population of cells. So you take most of the virus DNA out. I guess you leave the bits to make the virus work like a virus, and you put what you want in, and then it makes small changes to the DNA of the cells that it attacks like, as a virus, but it doesn't really do anything to them besides that. Right, exactly. So with this kind of change, it sounds like it's not a pill that you'd take every day. It's a permanent change. You'd get one injection of virus, and then your disorder would go away. Right. That, that's, the, that's really sort of the, the premise behind gene therapy. Uh, and so we think about using gene therapy for disorders or diseases uh, where the person has a lifelong condition. So things like diabetes uh, and in terms of brain-based disorders, we're thinking about treating sort of serious mental illness. So things that are really debilitating, things like post-traumatic stress disorder, perhaps schizophrenia, things like that. So what you're looking at is how eventually we may be able to take pieces of DNA and treat someone who's paranoid or who has post-traumatic stress disorder. How would that work in the brain? Is it different from the rest of the body? In principle, it's not that different. So you have viral particles that you've made and purified, and you want to put them um, near the cell that you want to infect. And so in the periphery, we often think about using gene therapies where we just inject them into the bloodstream um, or the, the target organ. Um, and so when we think about having uh, brain-based gene therapy, it would inv actually involve brain surgery, so, uh, but a relatively minor brain surgery. So this would involve uh, making a small hole in the skull, inserting a very small needle, uh, infusing the uh, viral particles, and then closing up the skull. And even though it's brain surgery, it sounds like as brain surgery goes, it's not super right. serious. You wouldn't want to do this for something that would go away eventually though, right? It's not Right, exactly. So we would never advocate gene therapy for something like um, a, a transient depression because perhaps your pet was sick or something like that. But these changes once made could really change someone's life and it wouldn't be a significant amount of, uh, of work to have this done once we get it refined, right? Right, exactly. You have to know what gene you want to target. Uh, and uh, you have to engineer the virus in an appropriate way so that it infects the cells, and you have to know where you, in the brain you want to put it. But once you've got those problems addressed, then we can uh, use it in a therapeutic way. Well, it's great. It's really great to hear how that may work in the future, and it's nice to know that people are out there working on it. Thank you. Thank you.